Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Ryzen 7000 CPUs come with a ton of new tech. PCI Express 5.0, DDR5, a new platform with a new socket and more. But there's one thing that's completely different from past Ryzen CPUs. They actually come with an integrated GPU. Now, before you say it, AMD has sold mobile Ryzen with integrated GPUs as well as Ryzen APUs, but they've made it a point to distinguish their APUs from CPUs by including an iGPU. With Ryzen 7000, those lines have been blurred. Now, while at the reveal event, AMD wouldn't state whether they would offer future parts without integrated GPUs or not. Think Intel's F series. So for now, all Ryzen 7000 parts have an integrated GPU. The difference is that these only come with two CUs for a total of 128 stream processors. For comparison, mobile Ryzen 6000 gets up to 12. Still, Ryzen 7000 does offer support for AV1 decode, H.264 and H.265 decode and encode. It also supports HDMI 2.1, DisplayPort 2.0, and Type-C with DisplayPort Alt mode. One thing you'll notice is that AMD didn't bother to name the iGPU like Intel does. They simply have it as Radeon Graphics. Regardless, these are still RDNA 2, and they come with up to 2200 MHz boost clocks. So I had to ask. Can it game? To answer that, I ran quite a few benchmarks and you may be surprised. For starters, when it comes to synthetic benchmarks, you can see that these definitely aren't the next flagship GPU. And that's why you won't be gaming at 4K, 1440p, even 1080p, other than games like Counter-Strike or League of Legends. In fact, those games at 1080p do fairly well getting over 60 FPS. With that said, most games are only going to be playable at 720p. For example, Rocket League gets very close to 60 FPS at high quality mode. Shadow of the Tomb Raider gets an average of 39 FPS, though everything definitely had to be turned all the way down. And I tried it with both DX11 and DX12, and the iGPU did very similar in both APIs. Of course, that isn't too much of a surprise given this is RDNA 2 based. Next, we have Wolfenstein Youngblood, and I was hopeful this could run at 1080p, but unfortunately, as you can see, it was simply unplayable. Even at 720p, while the average frame rate was well above 30 FPS, you can see it dipped well below at some point. So it really just depends on how sensitive you are to drop frames. And of course, we're still talking 30 FPS, so it's already really low. Also, you may notice that Wolfenstein isn't exactly demanding, yet it couldn't handle it. That means you're mostly relegated to esports games and older titles. Fortnite had decent performance, though there was some big frame dips from time to time. Possibly just a driver issue. Keep in mind that I was using drivers that AMD provided for the review. There's already a new driver out, I believe, but I highly doubt it will make much of a difference. This is about what I would expect at these settings. When it comes to games other than esports titles or less demanding older games, you won't have a good time. One issue not related that you'll likely have is trying to game while on a high-res monitor. Of course, you can always lower the resolution, but just getting to it can be annoying because quite a few games even lag really bad in the menus. And when you have, say, a 4K monitor, a lot of games will default to 4K. Sure, you can lower the settings on your monitor, but then what's the point of having a 4K monitor? So ultimately, there are some major hindrances to gaming on AMD's new CPUs without a discrete card. There are some workarounds like setting preferred launch settings in Steam, etc., but you'll obviously have to go in and do that. I also ran into quite a few driver crashes, a couple times when gaming, and even once when I was simply watching a YouTube video. So there's clearly some bugs to be worked out. But like I said, it's not too bad. At the end of the day, AMD's new iGPU can game, but mostly just esports and older titles. Anything too demanding and it just can't handle it. That makes this good for those who are piecing out their build. You can play a little while waiting to get your GPU. Or for those who play older games or only esports titles and you aren't all that competitive in it. Regardless, let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.